Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. hi Whoa. Oh, whoa. We just started the show. Okay, oh, what's wow. up? Whoopsie. Wow. Hi. Whoopsie, ding dong. Whoopsie. We, have a, we, have, we got an old school show here right here. Ross Patterson, Jared Taylor, and Matt oh, Best. Oh, oh, man. We got, we, got, we got three of the real OGs on, don't we? We do. I'm I'm looking like the uh, Folgers guy today with the flannel on because for once in Texas history, it is cold outside. I know. I couldn't thankful. believe it. I came outside. I was like, what? It's cold. I can't believe I haven't felt that temperature in months. Yeah. Months. Yeah. At all. I'm, I'm looking forward to that temperature. I fucking we're down here in a goddamn uh, it's it's like 18th century fucking slave heat. And uh, dude. <laughs> I just want to get out of it. I want 50 degrees. Um, I mean, you could just say it's humid and hot. I don't know if you need to do that <laughs> fucking analogy, but hey, whatever. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, I, it's, you know, you watch those movies and you're like, Jesus Christ, um, they're really sweating out there. Um, that's what I, I'm, I'm tired of that. Like, um, I just want to get into the fall, heading to New York tonight. It's at like a high of like 58. So I'm amped. We're uh, we're filming Jared's "It's Who We Are" for Black Rifle Coffee right after this, Ooh. so that's going to be a nice little piece on the history of JT, how Matt's he grew up. De- directorial debut, really? Is so that what? My debut? Of no, not really. So but, I don't think that's my but, directorial debut, but sure, it'll be a good one. Yeah. What? Uh, let me ask you this: When you guys do that, does somebody interview you? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be partly interviewing him with, uh, you know, Logan and Rich and team. And so we'll just sit Jared down and ask him all the questions about where are you from, where are you raised, how did you become part of the company, how would you get here, and then the backstory of kind of all the stuff we did. It's, it's, I love those pieces because it gives so much insight to, like, everything that's happened over the last, you know, seven years with us. And then, you know, fuck, you were doing production 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah, I know. I was, yeah. I, I was 13 when I edited my first video. Were you really? Boom. Yeah. Man, was it was it porn? Was it some form of pornography or? No, it was skateboarding. So okay. I had the the high school, which was across the street. Like I asked them if I could. They had an avid machine. I asked them if I could use it. They're like, "Do you know how?" And I lied and said, "Yeah." Dude, <laughs> you dude using an avid is no joke. Like if you don't if you don't know at home what an avid is, you've got to put a separate keyboard on. Yeah, it, I mean, I it took a little bit, but I figured it out. It's funny how easy editing has got with the like upgrade of software over the years. It used yeah, to be yeah. so much more difficult. Now they got plugins for everything. Oh yeah, and and a lot of those guys in Hollywood who only edited off of Avid's all those years are are losing their jobs because it's like, what? How do I use Premiere? How do I use Final <laughs> Cut? I wish I could have recorded this the other day. It was two days ago, Ross. Um, I still have my quick ranger reflexes. I almost got in a very large uh, car accident. And dodged it by about one second. It was it was All- interesting. I had a there's a flatbed and there's some construction, and it just must have burned through the red light and it smashed the car behind me and then sandwiched another car and threw the car at the back of my Raptor. But the second I heard the first hit, yeah. I looked in my rearview mirror and saw it coming right for me. So I like gassed it and cut off left really quick, and the car missed me by like I don't know six inches. <laughs> no I had like way. a second to react. Yeah, it was a bad one, and then I mean, I got out obviously and assisted everybody and made sure they were good to go. But did, I was like, "Not the raptor." <laughs> was everybody cool? Thing, like the six raptor. months ago. What's up? Was everybody fine? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I helped the uh, old man and lady out because they're both their airbags deployed and they were pretty shaken up a little bit, but th- they were they were fine. They were just a little cut up, but good to go. Shit, man. I, well, look, we're lucky you're alive. We should we should call that episode <laughs> the episode that Matt Best is still alive. Yeah, I don't know about that. He's I, I, still I, alive. I've you've seen got worse, you've but. got problems in in vehicles with four wheels, but you got a new razor. That's the, that's done with, right? The razor's done. Hold on, everybody says that. Fuck that. I mean, <laughs> no, I do. I did trade in my fast razor. Now I got a dad one, so it's got like music, doors, and shit. So um, that's way better. Oh, it's way more music and doors. It's so much yeah, better. Yeah. Are you recording at Jared's house right now? Yeah, I am. I came over to Jared's and he's got this nice little podcast studio and we got two mics set up as you can see since we're recording. So yeah, hell yeah man. Let me let me ask you this. How is the rest of the house? Because I, I have my own personal guesses. Is is there four or five empty rooms? 
Yeah, but I will say I haven't had been here for a while and I walked in and their kitchen is looking amazing and the remodeling that they're doing, it looks phenomenal. So it, it's going to be a very, very well put together house. Look at that. It's Jared, it's Jared growing yeah. up. And then, and then as soon as it's put together, I'll move out and build mine up at the hill. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Is that real, though, by the way? Because a lot of the audience has asked that after you said that. Are you building your own house on your own land? And then I'm your building ex building three houses and a bar. On your own land. So your ex-wife yes. and your kids will live in the main house, and then you'll live in a different yeah. house. I'll live in an, I'll, yeah, I'll live in a little fucking awesome little, like, strip mall. Really? Yeah. Do you like, like a tiny house? No, it's going to be, mine will be a, a two-bedroom, and then I'll have a second two-bedroom, and then the third two-bedroom is going to be more like a one-bedroom with a bunkhouse with, with like, six, uh, like, uh, road-style or bus-style beds, uh, and then it all connects on a deck into the bar. You shouldn't even build a house. You should just go buy a cheap double-wide and set it on there. Those <laughs> things are pretty nice, man. The kids no, are I, don't, nice. I mean... I found a place in Austin that does all this out of, of shipping containers yeah. and they make it look so cool and it's cheap. You know, these two bedrooms are only like 60 grand a piece. So it's like, well, cheap's a relative term, but yeah, for a two bedroom house. True. Fair. <laughs> yeah. That's like so wide. Dude, that's actually where we're at down here in Wilmington, North Carolina. They built a, a place called the cargo district and the whole district is built out of those shipping containers. Yeah. I love those things, dude. Some of them come right electricity wired and everything, so you literally just fucking plug them in, yep. and then you plug, you get your sewer, and then you're good to go. So yeah. that's what I'll do in March. I'll run my my septic and power and water lines, which is all pretty convenient where everything is. So we're good to go. Who's gonna build those for you? The company in Austin I was just talking about. Uh, okay, cool. Because uh, like here, I know those shipping containers. There's so many, uh, and they try to sell them off, and they're like twenty five hundred you know, to $3,000 a pop. And then, you know, they usually build them out of that. So I didn't know if the company bought them and then built that for you or. Yeah, they do. They do. They, they send an architect. You design your whole thing. They give you a price. You start paying them and they build it. No shit. Mm -hmm. Are you going to build a church like Kid Rock? <laughs> no, no, I'm just <laughs> sticking with the bar. But that's the thing is anybody that comes into town can now stay up in my little area. They have their own their own house with a washer dryer kitchen however they want to you know however long they're staying for to hang out with us or whatever and then you can walk on the deck to your bar every evening and you know hang out living the dream life huh yeah, yeah dude i would highly recommend a church though jared I, I think there's a lot you need to pray for i don't need one i don't know if jared <laughs> can walk into a church i don't know if that's a thing <laughs> his body would just scorch up into the air <laughs> <laughs> we are we are going to take over the music industry ross i've been really excited i saw a comment the other day about me and how i haven't posted on my youtube for like two months uh -huh. i apologize but we have like four songs written i'm going to la to record a rap song in like a week and a half and i couldn't be more excited we're going to troll every genre it's gonna be great so let, let me let me ask you this um is there gonna ask be a full album that's what the people want. Yes. Eventually, yes. We were fortunate, and I don't want to give too much away, to meet a couple great producers through Tim Montana in Nashville. And we sat down and did a country song in about two hours. And we've shopped it around to some big names. And everybody's like, oh, my God, you guys have a winner here. Yeah, you guys have a hit. <laughs> and so we're going we're gonna to just put an album together, go down there for a week, and record all of it. But we have two singles right now that are, that are about to come out, a country one. And the first one will be a rap kind of mumble song. Yeah, so we I'm, could look into December to do that. All we need is five days. I think so. My rap name, help me here, Ross. Yeah. Because I think I'm going to call it Poster, like my old call, call sign. But do I go like Lil Poster or do no, I go, go poster, just, just poster, poster up? Yeah. Yeah. Help. Poster. Maybe we should have the Drinking Bros vote because I'm not like a Lil Poster. I'm no, like a. Not at all. I don't know. It, it, it could, you look, you could go Poster Malone. Um, and po Poster <laughs> Malone. <laughs> yeah, nice. you, like, you like that picture I sent you today? <laughs> I, I, I did, man. That made me laugh my ass off. Who did that? I did. No shit. That was you? Have you not seen it yet? Yeah, I, I saw it on your Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jared's a professional at Photoshop. Of course he can. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I, a lot of people couldn't tell if it was him or not. I mean, even without the tattoos, people thought it was him. That's, I know. That was, that was why it made it funny. We're, trying to, we're, like we're it. still trying to get him on the show, by the way. So, hopefully. Dude, his new album's fire. I'm a fan. It's, it's amazing, front to back. I mean, 
I don't see him not wanting to come on. I mean, he seems super fucking just fun. He was like, yeah, cool. Sounds good. He seems rad. I, I think when you get that hot where it's just like, yeah. what is that, three albums in a row now that he's people just are, torched? People are shielding you from everybody. Well, not only you know that, I mean? but I, look, you're on a world tour and you're playing every single night and then to do interviews in the day and all that shit, like, uh, I'm sure he's, his schedule is packed, you know? Yeah, I went through that top 100 because I was just like to look at what's trending. And when his album dropped, I think he had like all 15 of the top slots. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, man. He's on. Another, you know what? I want to check what his planet. Spotify play is. Good. Oh, well, this would be billions. It, this would be interesting. It's in, so it's in the billions. I know this. And I remember last year when beer bongs and Bentleys came out, he was he finished the year at number three of everyone on Spotify. And I think the only two Whoa. people ahead of him were Taylor Swift and Drake, if I remember correctly. Dude, uh, it's hard to beat T oh, Swift, even though I don't like her new wow. single. I'm not a fan. It I, it just goes for him, it goes monthly. It's sixty million monthly. Oh listeners. god. Oh, oh man. Holy shit. That is Big some boy numbers. That is some cheese right there. That is intense, man. Uh god damn, sixty million a month just on Spotify. Yeah. Because I'm on a, Spotify. I'm an Apple Music guy, so like I don't even, you know, I don't fuck with Spotify that much. I can't even imagine what his his streams That's are. That's got to be Apple. like 10 million Apple fucking down, like are, purchases at least. You're an Apple Music guy. I'm happy to hear that, Ross, because I literally have the subscription, so I can listen to any songs I want on Apple Music you or can iTunes. Do that on Spotify. I know. Same. I just don't have Spotify. I, I I went to Spotify. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. It looks. Sp- if you, if fine. you could pick a fucking genre for us to do, we got a rap song, country song. What is LBS going to put out after? Yeah, what's what, next? what you want, Ross? What you want? You so get if, if you're doing rap and country, um, I, I would really, really like. I, I saw a video that Jared put on his Instagram the other day of it was kind of an '80s uh, heavy synthesizer. I would really like that. Well, we are doing. We an kind 80s. of already did that. With, well, we're doing. With, we're doing the one for yeah. the coffee commercial that. Um, yeah, so you're going to get that. Away, but. Yeah, you're okay. going to you're going to but but I think miss this, this shit kind of counts as the ballad. Yeah, it counts as the ballad, so we need to we need to keep moving. I look, I'm saying pure 80s, uh shot in that VCR style, heavy heavy synthesizer. <laughs> Jared, you, I don't think you're <laughs> Yeah. Kind of like super. Yeah. yeah. J- J- remember when Jerry got so fucked up on the boat, that's all he was playing for an hour was heavy synthesizer? <laughs> it's pretty hard to forget that performance and then uh really caps it off with wonderwall <laughs> <laughs> i still have to i, still I have it. to do my my redemption video of wonderwall i have to do that jared doesn't remember but i was telling him how that all went down he's like oh shit really i was like yeah after you laid on the floor and we wrapped this show i just walked up to him and i was like everybody wants you to play a song nobody asked him to play a song i no. just wanted to see what it would turn <laughs> into be and then <laughs> it's like <laughs> Literally no one, and then Jerry. You with know, Wonderwall. you know, I'm that drunk if I don't remember the lyrics to Wonderwall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the the rest of that evening, but uh, you left shortly afterwards, and I I asked the cruise director. I was like, Hey, where did Jared go? And he goes, Man, I don't know. He invited an entire bachelorette party inside, um, promised some free shrimp, um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then you went to go with them. I guess you were gonna. You, I guess you told uh, Parker, "Hey, I'm gonna go eat shrimp at the pool with those bachelorette people." So I don't know yeah. if you actually did that or not, but yeah, I did. Oh, you did. Good. I was talking to one of them this morning, actually. My, my favorite takeaway from that cruise <laughs> when, was people that went, "Holy fuck, Jared isn't an act. That that's just Jared." And I'm like, "Dude, we've been saying that for years. Like, it's just Jared. That's why it's so fun because it's it's like watching a car crash. You don't know what's going to happen. You hope no one gets hurt, but fuck, is it entertaining?" Oh yeah, uh, that was the biggest comment everybody said. They were, everybody was like, "Man, you guys really are like you are in the show." It's like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of real life, you know. Um, I got that a lot. I got Matt's a boring asshole, and I was like, yep, sounds about nice. No, <laughs> <laughs> no that, was that was fun, fun. man. I, I, I'd like to do it again. Um, I know Jared had pitched a camp, possibly doing a, a camping camping trip. Yeah, we're trying. We're really trying to. Like uh, a Burning Man thing? No, 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 no. So, like, like we think this would be really fun. It's, it's like, imagine, did you watch Wet Hot American Summer? Yes. So, we've been looking at full campgrounds that we can rent out and then when when we do this on the page you can sign up for which camp you want to be in so we're all counselors 
and we all have different oh color God. shirts. It's so like, like a team. So you're yeah, on like yeah. individual so team. So like people that want to be in my camp, you know, we're yellow, the cod crisis, like camp and then your camp is whatever color and your shirt that you want to be and then every the during the day we play games i'm the ball, adult camp like kickball and all this other bullshit and then at night we perform i i really enjoy that idea but it, it's fun it it brings the price point down way lower for it was people. brutal last yeah. time yeah it it also puts the responsibility really on them bring your bring your own food and drinks like you know, we'll we'll invite partners that have like food trucks and stuff like that. No, you just you, you just cater dinner every night and mm-hmm. with a performance, and then you have breakfast and lunch are on everybody else. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, we we're, we're able to like really have fun, and that's gonna and be not weird. make it like like rushed or you know, or being locked on a floating prison. Yeah. A Vegas prison. Yeah. Ugh. Sorry. I, it, it could be a fucking blast, man. We did a Dan and I did a live show at a campground last year, and everybody camped out, and sh- I, it was fucking rad. People cooked out, drank, um, and then it's weird because you're just sleeping next to everyone. It was a drinking. That's, that's my speed. That's my speed. Hell yeah. yeah, we'll bring RVs. Like, oh yeah, we'll I'm locking like my door. Dope RVs. You're not peeing on me. Yeah, so we left our camper open and just said, hey, if anybody wants to come in there uh, and do whatever while, while we're at the game, that's totally fine. When we came back, it was a little chilly outside, and we found a drinking broette face down on uh, the heating grid inside the trailer, which definitely left a mark on her. Oh, God. Oh, no. Is she okay? She was fine. I think a couple hours later, maybe just a little more embarrassed. Um, but there was wow. a, another drinking bro in there. It was, he, he had like office work to do. So he was using the internet and shit. And I was like, Hey man, you just, you didn't want to move her at all or whatever. And he goes, I don't know. She just looks so comfortable. I didn't want to fuck with it. And I was like, ah. I feel like that would be a brutal <laughs> hangover. If you fell asleep on a heater vent, just oh, that God, hot, yeah. dry air getting yeah, pumped just... through your fucking face. <laughs> Imagine your throat after that. It would be like you sucked a bunch of penises. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know that feeling, Ross. Oh, do I ever? I'm going through it right now vocally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I got a little something, a little tickle in the back of my throat, and it was probably someone's head, someone's little dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> um, before, before we move on here with this shit show, we got some sponsors who pay for this, uh, oh. this fuckery to be on the air. So, Matthew Best, since you're on, why don't you tell us about Black Rifle? What's going on there? Awesome. Yeah. People know Black Rifle Coffee, the premier roast to order coffee company. You know, we're veteran owned and operated. We have the coffee club that ships direct to your door. And uh, if people didn't check it out, we had the ECS, the exclusive coffee club subscription, which is our um, small lot, you know, single source, uh, really, really, really rare um, beans that we've been doing now. And it's very limited in what we can do. And thank you to everybody. It's sold out in, you know, the day it launched. So you guys are phenomenal. And the feedback has been fucking awesome. And we have so much cool stuff on that, that, uh, side of the house coming out. So yeah, make sure you, what's and, it, what's and the code the, these days for drinking bros? It's drinking bros 20. All right. Yep. Uh, All right. and then, uh, yeah, the, the stuff coming forward with that ECS mm-hmm. is super awesome. Cool. And we have a fuck ton of cool content coming out. We always are paused usually in October, but once November starts, man, we have so many commercials coming out. I can't wait. This Halloween it's... video I'm excited for. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. That's fucking awesome. I saw Joe Rogan wearing your shirt on a, uh, on a show the other day. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had the opportunity to, you know, say hi to him. He swung by the shop. Dude, Joe's just a phenomenal, amazing guy, man. And I'm not just saying that to say it, but yeah, he was, Rock Black Rifle on his show. He's just a good dude, man. So thanks to him. That's awesome, man. And we we uh, talked about Dakota Meyer being on there the other day on the show. Yeah, that was cool. That was a great episode. Um, I texted Dakota and I was like, if I ever go on Rogan, I'm going to make sure he knows that uh, you and I have matching tattoos that we tattoo each other when we were drunk. So <laughs> it's still on my wrist right there. And I tattooed it on his chest. <laughs> That's that's love. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about it on uh, fake news uh, last episode. Uh, that that show ended up being number one in the world on iTunes. That individual show. Wow, that's yeah. rad. Yeah, congrats to you guys. Yeah, shout out to to Dakota. Uh, next up, we got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. <laughs> Sleep so good, it's scary. I miss you doing that. I miss you doing that. You on know, the show. hey, I'll even help the sponsors, <laughs> even though you know I don't. You know. 
do anything. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do these in the evening again. Now that we have this, yeah, this is like a morning this, show. But this needs to go back to some Jameson. Oh some hell yeah, presses. We look, we, we got Rance some, we got some on the desk before this flight. I'm I'm hitting a a nice fucking huge drink. Um, and then I wish I could take my ghost bed with me. Uh, the beauty of ghost bed is they got a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest. No one on the interwebs is doing that. Averages out to like 38 bucks a month. Uh, which is pretty phenomenal. You get free pillows, and they're they're running a massive Halloween deal. And I'm convinced, Matt, it was because of your woo, sleep so good it's scary. Hey, you know what? I don't even need royalties. I'm here to help. <laughs> and my new campaign in the new year is fuck comfortably. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like right? that. Fuck comfortably. Because nothing like that that climax. And then when you roll over into like a pillow that feels like a cloud, you're kind of like, Man, that just made post orgasm so much better because yep. it wasn't a fucking garage door, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. You're totally right. Yeah, <laughs> fuck comfortably at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. If you are military or a first responder, you get 15% off of the entire Ooh. store. Last but not least, killcliffcbd.com. Man, this, this is the shit, dude. Um, 25 milligrams of CBD in a can. You know, Kill Cliff, obviously, from range 15. That's the best fucking drinkable CBD I've ever had, uh, and they sell out quick. Go to KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, type in the promo code Drinking Bros. You get twenty percent off and free shipping. Works out to like four bucks a can, which is about the the price of a can of Monster. This CBD is the goddamn shit, dude. Killcliff cracked the code on this one. <laughs> I'm I'm curious, Ross, because every time I go to Los Angeles or Vegas and I try CBD, I yep. tend to get like really slap happy and hungry and i'm laughing a lot do you know is that what cbd does yeah i think so uh a little bit it relaxes you too there's no thc in this and it's on the <laughs> no i'm just fucking i'm fucking with you <laughs> it's on the back no look some people have said that where they're like yo man i've felt like really great like the first time my wife tried it she was like jesus christ i feel great and i was like oh like enough to bring someone else in the bedroom and she was like, well, not that great, but, <laughs> but I, I take pretty CBD good. every day. As a Come on, it's 2019. She needs to lighten up. <laughs> that's Look, Jared, that's your world now, the swingers world, man. Um, I, I, I think you should leave the place open and just have like maybe eight to ten people living there at all time. <laughs> or you build one of those uh, one of your rooms, the, the double the two rooms, yeah. into like the pad, like the swingers pad. So whenever people go in there, it's just like. I'm not going in there, hey. but you know where it's like there's like a red love seat, hey. and tiger stripes. It's just like it's just like mattresses on the sheets. floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. I have a full time maid to clean up that nasty mess. Oh God, give her extra and a lot of rubber gloves. Because <laughs> you're you're down for that, Jared. Like you'll you'll you have no problem fucking in front of other people. No, I don't care. I know. Uh, and I love that about you. <laughs> I like how it was just right to the point. Nope, no. sure don't have a problem with that. I don't sure care. don't care. Yeah, you've moved on to the spirit world where it's just like, eh, let's let's bring two or three people in here. Yeah, it's just like I mean, who cares? You know, that's that's my philosophy. Who cares? You're gonna die anyway. <laughs> Why not do a bunch of weird shit with your that body? That should be your new single that comes out. <laughs> You're going to die anyway, so fuck a couple strangers <laughs> oh, together dude. and have other people watch. Together. You should do a folk song of fuck a couple strangers. <laughs> fuck a couple strangers. You were asking <laughs> or, or, about a genre before. Let's do a folk song called fuck a, a couple folk strangers. Song called yeah. Do You Want a Full Swap? Yep. Yeah. Come full swap with me. I got my pineapple pants. I shouldn't say that because I wear pineapple pants, but they're not upside down, right? That's the thing. They got to be upside down. Okay, they're not upside, upside down. down. Why? Wait, what? Why looking. is that? That's a couple looking. Upside down pineapple is a symbol that says a couple looking for a third or another couple. Shut the fuck up. Is that real? Yeah, dude. There's a whole there's a whole lingo genre of this. Like these people wear badges. Like they have they collect badges. So like if you go on the singles or the swingers cruise, like you wear what you are on your sash or whatever the fuck it is, you know, your little, like, whether you're full swap or half swap or it's hard swap, soft swap, same room, different room, closed door, open door, drama free, lock couple, like a <laughs> bunch of different things. <laughs> wow. Jared's our sex expert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's get into it. Um, you're a door open guy then, obviously, right? You don't care. Uh, I don't know. Um, 
No, I, I would definitely not be an open door person on a fucking swingers cruise because if you're open, if you're an open door uh, swinging couple, uh-huh. that means anybody that walks through that motherfucker, you're down. You know, like, no, 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 I'm more oh. of a I'm more of a locked couple, maybe like <laughs> what's a locked couple? That's like you're in a re- you're in a relationship with another couple. So you're a couple and you're in a relationship with Does another everybody couple. fuck everybody. Is it just like I mean, I don't think the dudes fuck each other, but. Okay. <laughs> so my so my theory for a long time was is we book the swingers cruise and we we wear the locked couple badge but we walk on the cruise swapped already. That way people see us enter with the opposites already and then we switch back once we're on it so we like snuck in to just watch all the drama. Oh. Cuz you know there's got to be dude there's that, good people that, watching there I'm that sure. That cruise sells yeah. out. It's 5000 people. It's like a it's like an 8th month waiting list to get to get a slot on there. Like you know like because most cities and stuff like that have those pockets of it's like a subculture inside the city. Okay. So all the swingers go to the swinger bar and they all know each other and things like that. So it's like you know like the swinger group in Austin is like, yeah, we're doing the cruise again, but don't invite the Smiths. Like, tell them we're not going. Oh. And then the Smiths decide to just go by themselves, and they see all their their crew there because they didn't realize that they were like trying to be cast, like casted out. And oh. then they're like fighting and like, oh, God. what's the demographics on that cruise? I feel like uh, it's going to be a lot of up, of above fifty. Right? That's the, that's the no, that's the question uh, right there. Like lots of bald hair tattooed yep. dudes and a bunch of like thirty to forty five year olds. <laughs> Most of the men are older. Um, and you know what? A, a lot of this too is when, cause I was just diving down this fucking world to just cause it was so fucking funny and weird. Um, there's a trend that like a lot of this world is the, the guy is well off and he married a younger girl that's good looking. And then he talked her into this. So it's like, there's, there's girls that are legitimately down for this and stuff like that, but there is a large percentage of women that are just like being kind of like pushed into it by their spouse. Like, I'll buy you a Bentley yeah, if you and, come on the and cruise. And that's more important to them, so they're like, ah, fuck it, whatever. Interesting. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, look, a wor- it's a weird world out there, Ross. It it's is, a weird man. World out there. I may have wandered into a place back in the day in New York. I- I'm not going to say it was called The Vault. I'm not going to say they had lockers <laughs> and a bathroom. Why do they always have those like names that give it away? The vault, the like vault. the center, the sweat center. It was one of those things where you keep, I kept seeing the t-shirt in New York and I was like, man, I was in college and I was like, what, what the fuck is the, finally I just asked, I was like, what the fuck is the vault? And they were like, oh, you don't know about the vault? Uh, you've got to bring a, a girlfriend or a significant other and then you go in and blah, blah, blah. I will say this, Matt is probably the most accurate on this. It was dudes and women uh 50 plus i would say yeah because yeah, that's I, probably when you finally are just like dude i've been married 20 years like fuck let's do something yeah, yeah. I, maybe <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Ugh. like fuck man right now matt what, what are you in marriage year two three Three, yeah. Three, yeah. So, look, you never know in 20 years if you're going to be hey, like, Hey, you yeah. never know in 20 years. Yeah, but, 20 I mean, as of now, like, I couldn't walk into fuck. a place like, can't wait for a dude to hit on my wife. It'd take me three seconds to be like, well, I'm going to fist fight everybody No, in I here. said that's what I want to do in 2020. I want to fall crazy in love with a girl, and then I want to watch her get banged by somebody else. Why? What? Why? Because I want to see if it pulls any feelings out of me. Oh, see if you still have any left. Yeah. We have one feeling left. Which one's that? I don't know. We oh. got to find it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I need now. I have to go to extremes. To Do you see like if I can misery? Get, no, I just want to see if I can get myself to emotionally react. Who wow, you fall in love that would be with? awesome. I don't know but I mean, that's what I, I'm. I'm dead set on it. So I'm not going back. Even if I'm like, oh my god, I love this girl. It's fine. I'm done with all. And this then, are you going to watch? Yeah. I'll be there. Jesus. I mean, you- I'm going to have somebody with me, too. <laughs> okay. Like, it's going to be a switch situation. So you'll have another girl. Yes, but I'm not just going to stand there and watch, but I want I want that to happen. I didn't know if it was like where the, the cuck holding. No, 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 I'm not doing that. that is. Cuck shit. Yeah, you better bring something to me, like, if you're getting mine. That's my deal. <laughs> Got it. It's, so, like, if you're yeah, going to eat you're my not, sushi, yeah, you're at not least eating. give me a yeah, cheeseburger. You better fucking bring a snack, too. This isn't like I'm feeding you. <laughs> I love your food analogy. <laughs> Jared's sexual analogies are always in f- food. 
Oh man, if you go full cuck though, dude, holy shit! No, no, because that then you're a bitch. Like I'm not, I'm not doing that, and I'm not into that. I'm like, or like, you could. I don't direct, mind a direct girl. the porn of someone banging the chick that you love. I you could. I mean, that that's that's I'm fine with the video <laughs> thing. I'm fine with, but I just I I want to I wanna, I really want to do this to myself. <laughs> okay, <Why>? so <laughs> no, let, let's. You let's, know, like when you're flossing and it gets addicting because it kind of hurts. <laughs> <laughs> What? No. And you no, just can't stop. You can't stop because it's like the pain is good. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't even right now, dude. No. No, man. I, no yeah. point. Drawing that parallel is like, <laughs> okay, fuck it. I'll go with it. You know? Listen, yeah. what, what, what fucking, what creative person or musician ever wrote a good song that wasn't fucking miserable? That's true. <laughs> Valid point. You see a lot of people when they're happy, their careers start sucking. I want to spike. Like for my instance, fucking... Keith Urban was yeah. great when he was a drug addict and hated his life. And yeah. now he's yes. all happy with Nicole Kidman. His music fucking sucks. Yeah. And he's sober. You don't yeah. write good music happy. Yeah. Yeah. You get you vitamin C. <laughs> 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 so I'm just saying, like I like I said, I am addicted to fucking like we're going to die at any moment. We don't know when. So I am just going to do everything I can to spike every sort of sense that there fucking is. You, you go carpe, carpe that DM, dude. Yeah, my man. Wow. What if you actually enjoy it, though? I think I will. That's the problem. And then you're going to have just other dudes wanting to fuck your, your lady all the time. And like, well, I if they bring a snack, then I have no problem. <laughs> I, look, you're going to have like a whole line of people waiting like, oh, I definitely want to bang this Kelly chick, but I'll bring Samantha and Samantha like, whatever. Yeah. Is he going to yeah. feed me White Claw? Sure, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see that girl you brought on the cruise being into some shit like that. Oh, she definitely is. I want to watch it all transpire, but yeah. I don't want to be there. Just like the cruise, I had so much fun because I got to watch all the debauchery, but yeah. then I got to go lock myself in my room yeah, with my yeah, wife. Yeah, 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 no, no, we'll do, yeah, definitely that. I'm interested. I'm interested to see what 2020 brings. I'm interested what if I, I I've put the I've laid the new rule down, yep. which is which is um, anybody that I talk to uh, romantically, I tell them you have to know me and be friends with me for a year before you make the decision that you want to be in a relationship with me. Because I, I think I pinpointed the 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 problem. So, okay, send it. Okay, so the the, the problem I like this that I have, that I have seen that with everybody, the last four or five people, is they rush in to the the uh, they they are obsessed with this crazy lifestyle, the cool things that we do get to do, the schedules we have, the cool places we get to go, the stuff that we get to experience and do. They like that. They they ignore really getting to know my personality and how I am and they don't decide they have never once gone okay I love that person because of the way he is because every single one of them after that three month mark it drives them crazy how how my mind works and like none of them have been able to understand it's like it hits them it hits them like a fucking freight train out of nowhere like and they yeah, don't. That's, that's adapt just the lust to in, in like, honeymoon phase. They're focusing on all the positive things, and then once they want to develop yeah, you they, into the type of relationship they want, you're not. That and then dude. they try, and then they try and change it. But and I think like, that's not necessarily on them. I think that's any relationship, right? It's like you are you're willing to sacrifice so much of who you are when you're younger, mainly, and just to like become what the other person wants. And then at that six month mark, you start to become comfortable, especially if you're living with each other, and you're like. Okay, I don't really want to do that. And then you start pissing each other off and you have that conflict. Well, it's like the S. Yes, there's so much friction in all the friction came from just the way I normally conduct myself on a day to day basis. And it was like, where have you been the last fucking three to six months? Because I haven't changed. That's like, fair. <laughs> I mean, you put it all out there these days, so it's pretty easy to read into who you are. Yeah, it's, it, it, I, it's, it's almost got to be a drinking bro at this point, though, right? Yeah, or military. Uh, drinking brewer military, it doesn't matter either or <laughs> like, um, you know, I tend to connect better with people that have experienced an equal amount of loss and death, uh, just because That's they, dark. well, I mean, they appreciate life better. I'll tell you straight up people that have not had that 
I have noticed a direct correlation in how much they dwell on petty bullshit rather than going, hey, I have air conditioning and electricity and fucking internet. I'm good. Like, like this is nice. We're, we're, we're in a good spot right now. We won't, you know, we're not living in South Africa. We're not, we're not in the fucking Middle East. Like, we're doing pretty good. I'm not going to worry about a bunch of dumb bullshit. That's like, fair. And be a happy person. That's fair. Um, but, I mean, the biggest thing to know about me, and, and this, is, this has been a huge, like, hurdle with a lot of these girls, is if I have an idea in my head that I, like, that a creative idea, get the fuck away from me. Like, I have that a lot. It's the like the fuck bitch don't kill my me. vibe. Like, I'm like, shutting the door. I'm putting yes. headphones in. Don't mess with don't, me until I come out. But you said we were going to. Nope, we're not going. You're going to go by yourself. You're going to go do whatever the fuck you want. I've got I'm on this mission now. Just go away. And this is and these are the things that made all of this possible that fund everything that we do. So I need you to just go away. <laughs> Man, I look, there's about you're, you're really limiting the group now at this point. You're, you're down to about eight women. No, no, I don't think so. My wife does a good job at it. Like when I'm like in my mode and she's like, hey, I thought we we're gonna go to dinner. I'm like, Just I am fucking dink. down the rabbit hole right now. She's like, all right, cool. I'll leave you alone. So, I mean, there's people out there that have those attributes. It's just a st like a form of being understanding and knowing that art doesn't just come out of you, you can't force it. It just sometimes it comes at two in the morning and you got to get up and work for five hours and then go back to bed and sleep at noon. Like just the way it works. Yeah, but it also, and that was terrible yeah. math because five plus two is seven and not noon. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowhere close like, to it. People need to have their own things too. You can't, you can't make, and that's another thing that I've, I've seen. It's like, I can't be your sole source of fucking entertainment and, and everything all the time. Like go find a hobby, go fucking, go fucking play. Go a video find game. this other hot dude. Yeah. And fuck him. Fuck and it, I'll send watch. me a video. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just leave me alone when I'm coming up with a new idea for a blimp over LA. I don't care. Uh, look, I think the best way to do this then is to invite another couple to live with you and then that way they would they would always have entertainment you should put gopros up in your A female your couple new... female female couple oh that's now you're just what? being yeah i think no i think that i think that's a that's, lot of estrogen yeah but you know what if they're if they're the couple and i'm just the accent that works with my lifestyle that's fair yeah, yeah. so you're just like the I'm dick just, when they i'm need invited one. for fun Hey, we yeah. want to have fun. And the happiest I've ever seen you is when you're fucking two girls. Like, that's like that's who you're... <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the happiest you see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean you personally. Like, I, I think, mean, I think are, you're at your zenith. Are you zenith happy when that? you have one piece of pie, or are you happier when you got two? Uh, you mean gum or pie? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, sorry hey, about hey. that. That is for the OG listeners. Joke. That's those. That was years ago. That was for the OG <laughs> that was listeners. Years ago. Uh, yeah, but I look. I think. I think if you put that out there and say, "Look, I'm looking for two girls to come and and live with me and do this whole situation," I think that would probably be the easiest thing for you. We yeah, need to film I a reality a show, few. though. I want to watch that yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely. This would episode you, of, yeah, would you GoPro the entire fever. house? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I don't care. Put it on Pornhub. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. That would be awesome, man. It would be fun. <sighs> you know I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dead set, Ross, on in February. I do want to go rent a house somewhere and film uh, The Bachelor, Drinking Bros Bachelor. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to be the host. Dan's going to be The Bachelor. And I'm going to be drunk and make up the challenges on the spot every day. And they're going to be fucked up. <laughs> Can Ross and I be the, uh, the field people that come out and interview oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. them? Like, yeah. So how are well, you feeling about so this challenge? So Dan, Dan's going to show up and there's going to be 10 women and two dudes. Oh. And then oh. I told him, I, like, right away, I'm going to have a mic. I'm just going to be, like, wasted. Like, all right, right away, you got to get rid of two. Pick. Um, Dan's going to pick one girl and one of the guys. So he's going to leave one of the guys. That's funny. <laughs> You could shoot what if that Dan at the falls ranch. in love with a dude and just becomes best. That's friends what we were talking about. Like, yeah. like when he goes on the date with the dude, they both come back with women, and, <laughs> and then they're high fiving, and then all the other girls are pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's like, yeah. At the end of the show, he's just like, you just want to move in together and pick up chicks. <laughs> do you think if we put that out in Drinking Bros Singles, that there would be women who would be willing I to do that? Oh, I already sure. did. There was over 400 volunteers. No fucking way. Yeah. Yeah. There's e easily 150 women that said I'm in. Wow. Holy yep. shit. 
it that may- is like some Kentucky reality show shit right I there, know. man. It's great. Uh. Like, it would it would do well. Y- yeah, you would put it on Pornhub, obviously, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah, uh, I think that's the appropriate place for it these days. Yeah. Pornhub's getting bigger these days. You know? They're getting huge, dude. Everybody's using them. I, did I told you Kanye did a fucking event with them? No, really. Yeah, he is did a Pornhub mu- bigger than you porn. Pornhub's the largest. It's the number three website in the entire world. Yes. What? Yes. Yep. In the world. In the world. In the world. Website. In the world. Damn, we consume some porn up in this bitch. Yeah. But that's, that's the that's why Kanye and like a lot of celebrities are going that route. They number did one a, is Facebook and number two is Google. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I I contribute to that site. That's why that's why it's like it's kind of like again, this goes back to yesterday, Ross, where I say everyone is full of shit. Wait, I wanna actually let's talk <laughs> about yeah. this because I since this is like a sex podcast. I saw a couple posts throughout different groups the other day, and people were talking about, is porn cheating? And then also they were asking, are sex toys cheating? Like, is using a vibrator or dildo cheating? And I was like, what? And it, it, was, yeah. it was very interesting to see some of the responses. Like, as long as I'm okay with the porn, it's not cheating. Oh, and I was oh, like, God. man, that's... Shut up. It was super bizarre to see how reserved some people are. But then I have to look back at myself when I was like... My early twenties, I thought like if a girl was using a sex toy, I was like, "Why? Why are you using that? Am I not good enough?" And like, oh god, yeah, that whole like insecurity thing. And now That's, it's like, who, that who was literally it? my response. I'm like, "What are you twenty and dating right now?" But what do you think about that, Ross? Do you think that if someone, let's say, whatever, that you're w- with a woman or you're w- whatever, I'm not making it about your wife, but like if they're watching porn and using a toy, are you like, "What the hell?" Or are you like, "You do you?" No, I, I'm, I'm for it. Um, because then at least, you know, they're not off fucking other people or cheating or whatever. Agreed. And I walked, dude, I actually, there was somebody I used to date, uh, obviously before I was married and I walked home and she was using a vibrator in porn and I was just like, Oh fuck. Uh, all right. I didn't know you were down for that kind of party. And like, I'm fine with it because it eliminates the rest of it. You know? No, no, no. Here, this goes to back to relationship psychology and how we fucked up as a race coming in here and too many people. <laughs> feel that because they they entered a relationship a relationship is generally an agreement saying hey we're going to be monogamous to each other and we're going to we're going to love each other that doesn't mean you fucking own me so i'm still my own person i can still do whatever the fuck i want and that's the problem with what people think they get ownership over somebody else and it's like oh you watching porn is cheating like motherfucker you do i am not your property like you are an extension of my life that we agreed to be romantic together. That's where it fucking ends. Not you're making the rules on how I'm going to live. Agree, but caveat would be I think people that date, they're not transparent and open enough off day one. Like day yes. one, yeah. when someone's like, a girl's like, so do you watch porn? A lot of guys are like, oh, no, I'm not really into porn that much. Like if I had to go on a date at this point in my life, um, if I wasn't married, it would be like, do you watch porn? I'd be like. All the time. All Love the it. Time. Every day. This is what I watch. And if people Three are like, that, oh, God, God, can't. And then like, well, then you're, we're just not the right yeah. fit. Yeah. You got to get over Done. your own shit and then come back in five years when you're a little more Go mature. Go get an open mind, weirdo. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I never got that whole porn cheating thing. It's no, super bizarre it, it's, to me. There's no such thing as cheating. Well, the other what? thing, too, about being <laughs> married. <laughs> yeah. yeah <there> is. <laughs> the other thing, too, yeah, about being yeah. married is you know what to like, you know, you've especially if you're in a long relationship past, you know, three years or whatever. Uh, you know, if, if you were to get divorced or leave the relationship, you know what to ask for of like, all right, I'm kind of done with this. And here's what I want you to be like. And, and it's easier then. And that's why I think it's easier well, for you now, Jared. Relationships are like houses, dude. Like you, you got to live in a few before you know the house you want to build or buy, man. Like it's so weird to come in and just like, this is the house. And then you realize, fuck, I don't like two stories. You know, that's yeah, kind of annoying to walk up with a pool. There you go. <laughs> 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 no, just most people are full of shit. That's the problem. Like, you porn's the number three website in the entire world, and it's like, and we still kind of put this this I, again. I hate American culture and the aspect of this stigma on sex. <laughs> what was the Salt Lake City banner we saw? Like, it was yeah. Maxim is pornographic. Yeah, it was yeah. a huge it's a sign. Sin. It's like Maxim. I'm like the girls the in a goddamn up. bikini, man. She looks good. She's like, owning it. Everybody needs to just shut the fuck up because they're all full of shit. Like. The same people that are, you know, speak out, dude, I was watching this like it was from the 80s. Uh, it was a congressman from Texas that was trying to pass uh, a bill in Texas that anal was illegal. 
and he's in the house arguing this, like whether between husband and wife or whatever. He was trying to make a bill that it's illegal. Why? And it's like, exactly. Why? You are a fucking dumbass. You do not need to be a representative of anything because, like, there was a female congressman arguing the point back and forth with, okay, if there's a slip, are you supposed to both walk into your local police uh, station and turn yourselves in? He wanted to be a class three misdemeanor. You get pulled like, over for a speeding you ticket. Gotta, He's like, you yeah, he in the car. Like, I'm sorry, I like, fucked my wife yes, in the ass last night. You gotta <laughs> watch this clip because it will blow your fucking mind. And I honestly wish we had a fucking method put into our government that when a fucking elected official comes with some dumb shit like this, like anal should be illegal and islands tip over if you put too much weight on them, we just get to hit a fucking eject button that fucking puts them in an incinerator and gets rid of these fucking idiots. <laughs> so angry this morning. <laughs> that is one of my favorite things, though, is when you have like an anti-gay politician and then they catch them like six months later banging out some twink yeah, and they're like everyone's their full of house, shit. Yeah. This is my fucking book what, I'm what writing. What are you doing, dude? Everyone's full of shit. <laughs> so let me ask you this. With, the, with the, the person who was against anal, was it just dudes or girls too? No, 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 no. It was, he was putting forth a bill that Anal sex is illegal in the state of Texas. You got to watch this clip because for, it's for fucking everyone, crazy. Men and women, everyone. Okay, cool. husband and wife. If Ugh. you are a husband and wife, you are not allowed to engage in this. And this is what the female congressman was arguing with him about. Like, are you are you dead serious right now? Like, we're wasting our time with this bullshit. Like, that sounds like Beto. If it's the law, they'll listen. Yeah, what? Fuck Shut off. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking <laughs> Beto ass bitch. <laughs> Beto, you're a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's almost gone. You know that, right? He's he's uh, down to very few percentage points, and they don't think he'll make the yeah, next Yeah, and debate. I'm going to yeah. wait about a year to where, like, everybody unfollows him on Twitter, and he becomes, like, a smaller personality. Then I'm just going to fucking call him a bitch every day. Like, how does it feel, you fucking douchebag? You're a loser. I, I wonder... think Jared needs a threesome to cheer him up. Yeah, or yes, you do. Yes, yes. You need yes, someone I rubbing do. your balls, another one jacking you off. Angry. Like that's the happiest yeah. you've ever been. <laughs> no, w- my my number one dream, and I have not, I have not succeeded in this yet. Is I love head massages, like like you know, like <laughs> your actual not, head. I was not expecting yes. that. I I want a really good head massage during a blowjob. I think that's the could be the best feeling in your life. Uh, a head massage could with a blowjob. Yeah, I, that, that's that's <laughs> probably top so, five. I would say you're sitting between a, a girl's legs while she's massaging the back of your head. You know, running her hands through your hair and everything. Like a good like, head massage, like puts going. you into fucking like space. Yeah, um, I, I'll, I'll then, let me ramp this up a little bit, Jared. I'd like to be on a <laughs> massage table with a hole cut out, so my dick and balls are going through the hole. And I'm getting a full body massage, and then somebody's jacking me off. Isn't it called like a milking station? Something like that, yeah, where I'm getting jacked off. And you got like four hands, one working out the knots in your hammies, one up on your traps, and, yes. then, you're, you're, and then you're the milk station. But what if it was zero gravity and a girl was riding you through the hole? Wait, can you guys make that t-shirt for Drinking Bros? <laughs> it's, it's a dude getting massaged on the back and front, and then a girl underneath, and it just says, milk station. <laughs> <laughs> the milking. Just wear um, that in public. People be like, uh, uh, I think I think a really good drinking bro trip for all of us, Ross. We need to look into this. Is let's go to Houston and do the vomit comet. I have no. Clue. I don't know it's, what that is. What is the, that? It's the plane that, that oh, puts you in zero gravity, yeah, so in. we could float around. And like in. that would be so fun if we if we built some games and tasks that we have to do in zero gravity, and we're competing against. I each other. I want to see Evan try to make coffee. In oh, zero that would be super cool. <laughs> Let's reach out to them. I don't want to see you get your head massaged. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Have you been in it? No, uh, I mean, they just put the plane into a dive. They go up to about 45,000 feet and then put the plane into a dive. And what is the zero gravity? It's like 15 seconds or something, 20 it's seconds? It's like 20 seconds, yeah. yeah. And you're like floating that. and everything. is fucking cool. That's fun. Yeah. I'm down. So if it's they, 15, they do it. it's it's like, 15 seconds. It's like three seconds. grand a person. Cool. But, I mean, wow. we, maybe we could talk to them. How many iterations it. do you get? It's like 50. Iterations of yeah. it? Oh, that's not bad then. If yeah. it was one, that's you're, way You're on like an hour and a half flight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shit. It, it goes up like 50, 60 times. I bet after like the 25th one, you're like, ah, okay, I'm kind of ready to land. 
<laughs> yeah. I want a parachute, too, so I can jump out if it crashes. I, I would probably go down to maybe 5 to 10 on that. Uh, 50 to 60 would no, be a lot. No, you got it. I mean, because once you start getting into it, now now you're like, because you start getting good at maneuvering and things like that, it's like, ooh, I'm waiting for the next one. I'm going to do this. That is true. Yeah. You, the only like, thing would be flip. like, do they pad the floor? So Because oh, I, I want to do backflips. padded. Okay, because I want to like, do like backflips You look this up. Like, it, it, this is a violent comment. It's fucking, or I think it's, it's not called that. It's called like the comment something. Like zero, zero G is what it's called. I was going to say vomit comment would yeah. be terrible zero marketing. Yeah, terrible marketing. Um, I'd like to see this, Jared. If it's 15 seconds, you get jacked off on the way up, right? Just as you fucking come, boom, zero gravity, so you can see <laughs> and your it's nuts. everywhere. Yeah. And it's just 15 seconds worth of ropes. <laughs> everybody's dodging 15 seconds worth of ropes. We've been taking rope X for three weeks. <laughs> the weirdest thing, I am busy whatever day that is. So I hope you guys have a fucking blast. <laughs> Pun intended. I, I Look, Jared, we're close enough friends. I would get in that thing with you. Um uh, on I, this episode of Jared Taylor's Life, I think, Dodge comes. I'm not going <laughs> to jack you off, but Dodge I'll be in come it. and zero gravity. No, I think we should all do a trip. I think that would be funny. And I think it. No, it doesn't go. I, I don't know if it goes out of Houston or Cape Canaveral. It might be Cape Canaveral. Mm. But fuck, it's called Zero G. It's cool. Uh, I well, hey, try it. While we're down and there, then, we can do another show at that strip club. We did a live show inside <laughs> a strip club. Did you get club. hit up by any of those strippers? Everybody did. Uh, Bucks Wild is the name of it. And uh, the manager said we were welcome back anytime. That, that, that episode brought a lot of new customers into Bucks Wild down there. And, uh, man, that's still some of the craziest shit of all time, if you didn't hear what happened, man. No, no, I heard. And then I listened to the episode because I wanted to see how crazy it was. And then uh, I did enjoy the gentleman where you're saying if they're going to try to sleep with people on the cruise. And then that dude was like, no, if someone tried to sleep with me or Noel, we'd both have to probably kill each other. And I was like, that's a dude that knows me. Thanks, homie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then but the it, it was the... interesting that to meet everybody on the cruise and then to hear them how blacked out they were, some of them, that night. And I thought it was very interesting. And it was um, a wild story, it looked like. Somebody fucked inside the club. That's... I don't know if that's legal. Yeah, uh, that's so. allegedly. Uh, uh, yes, we should put a, a hard air quote around allegedly, but uh, somebody may have been fucking in the, in the booth, and everybody might have watched it, like maybe 50 people. Mm. Um, so, yeah. You guys turned up, as it sounds. On a Tuesday at Bucks Wild, and I was surprised. Like, On it a wasn't, Tuesday. It, it, it wasn't like sea scars and shit. Like, it was, like, the talent was decent in there. Wow. I want to go back. Yeah. You didn't yeah, go. so if, I if didn't we, go. I want to go for the first time. Yeah, if we go to do the zero gravity thing, then we'll uh, we'll do a live show inside Bucks Wild again. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man, I, I just want to be a catalyst though, because I'll stay sober, but I want to like give stacks of ones to people and just see what debauchery what they would get into. Yeah, you can throw them at like at people in there too. They don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like it's money and that's what they're working for so i presume that they don't care i'm talking Stack about a hard ones. toss right to the chest where you're like whoa that's... do they allow you to bring in stacks of quarters no no legal because i don't. call that making it snow not rain <laughs> it's called, it, we call that Just acid like, rain <laughs> yeah. acid rain is what we call that the worst is if you lick the quarter and then throw it at them so it sticks oh yeah you could stick a That's quarter right to an quarter, ass. Though. I'm talking about like the bank rolls of quarters. I'm yet to take home a stripper successfully. Really? really? Yeah. In my life, in my life, I've never. What? I've never. I mean, well, you banged a stripper, I presume, just not from your. No, same. I knew her because she was a makeup artist, and then found out later that she was stripping. So I don't count that. So you're saying meet her at the club? Yes. And then meet okay. her at the club and successfully woo her enough out of all the like, because I feel like that's a that's a higher level, like because this woman. Her entire career is based on guys coming in and fucking feeding her lines and things like that. So yeah. I have to do this. I have to achieve this. The competition my, is an all time yes, high. Yes, it's an all time high. And if I'm able to do it, you know, then I'll feel good about myself. You are cleaned up now. You might have some opportunity yeah, to do so. so. All right. Yep. Yeah, I thought, I thought we, when we did that show with that rock star dude, I thought you were fucking that stripper. So that wasn't. Oh, that's right. She said you didn't. You guys didn't have sex that night. When was this? Uh, Salt Lake City. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I didn't, I didn't bang any of them. They were, they were, they dude, they were like dry, like lost causes. It's like they were always bullshitting. 
Ah, really? So they weren't they weren't really down to to fuck like that. Yeah, like Molly Molly kept it even the last time I was in Salt Lake. Molly kept having me out to the club and then like day four, I'm like, Hey, are we going are we gonna fucking hang out tonight when you're done working or what? She she's like, Oh, I have a boyfriend. I'm like, Motherfucker, you could have told me that fucking day one when you texted me. <laughs> you gotta have clients though that keep coming in, yeah, spending that shit. That's trades. what I mean. I keep getting hustled and yeah. now I'm like now I'm like Fuck. Props to her, you got to you got played. Do, I, do is there any strippers that listen to the show? Message me on Facebook, please. Yeah, send um, send nudes into Drinking Bros podcast on Instagram too. <laughs> on a completely unrelated self promoting note, um, did you see that the audiobook is on its seventh week at the New York Times bestseller? Hi, oh, I did see that. Uh, what what I wanted to ask you about is is it okay if we drop a couple chapters uh, as a preview for the audience? Just in case some some people might not have heard it yet, perhaps they would like to listen to it. Yeah, I think if we maybe chopped up a chapter, why don't we give a little teaser if they haven't listened to it? Um, I mean, I've heard a lot of people that they read the book and then they actually went and bought the audio book because they said it was a completely different experience. Um, and, and it was fun to, to hear me read the story. A so. lot of them were saying that in Nashville. Yeah. So and, and again, dude, appreciate everybody that supported the book. I mean, it, thank you guys so much. Seventh week on the New York Times bestseller list. Like that's I like so everybody's been like, you got to write another one. I'm like, bro, I need to chill on the book stuff for a little bit. That was an arduous process. I'm ready to like fuck off and make silly skits for a while. <laughs> yeah, dude, a, a, a book's a fucking beast, man. Uh, no, now it's an album. That's what's next. And an we album, a, we yeah. Need a RI, we want an RIAA award, whether it's for a single or for an album. That's, my, that's, that's our next goal. So how do you get that exactly? You have to sell uh, 500,000 singles cool. or 500,000 albums, and then that's gold. That's a okay. gold? Yeah. Oh. So I want a gold disc, man. That one, would be of, rad. one of Post Malone's singles just went diamond. What is diamond? Do you know? Diamond is two million. Ooh, fuck. Yeah. Shit. Those are, those are big boy numbers. Yeah. Oh, those are big boy, big boy numbers. Yeah, we're not going diamond. We might be able to hit a gold. Yeah. Do they have bronze or copper? No, they got rid of silver. <laughs> silver used to be two fifty. What is a really budget so, friendly metal so material yeah, that we could get? Yeah, it's gold, platinum. Platinum's a million records sold. Diamonds two million. That you, shit's hard now with streaming too because or actually, no, you know what? Diamonds five million because you go double platinum when you hit two million. Two million. Oh, you're right. Platinum, you're right. And then yeah. diamonds five million. I forgot. I was. I, re I remember looking that up. Yeah, go down the periodic chart and look for a lesser mineral, and then <laughs> no, they got rid of it. They used to have a silver. Yeah, but do you have iron, gone. maybe iron. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's selling twenty thousand. Five hundred thousand is, is there's a reach there. It's not too far out. Yeah, you got to go mainstream with that though. It's radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah you go radio. I think we got it. I think we, we got might it. have it on one of we the tracks. We might have it. It's gonna have to be an old town road type sitch. Gonna take my trap. I don't know. Yeah. What well, we just that. have to we just have to write twelve words to a song. Is that is that what we're gonna do? We pretty did much. That. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, we <laughs> pretty did. much. He was. I saw an interview with him uh, Saturday night. He was on LeBron James got a show called The Shop on HBO, and he was on there and talking about his process and and why he came out as gay during the height of that thing, and he just said, "Look, man, I can't really get any bigger than that. So at least people wouldn't know that I was full of shit um, if I was gonna ruin my career. You know." Um, How would him coming out being gay ruin his career? I mean, no offense. One second looking at him, I was like, the dude's probably gay. I know that's a stereotype, but well, who cares? Fuck. Well, man, I'm going to bro. I'm going to bring this back. If Keith Urban actually came out, uh, it would shock a lot of people. So. Yeah, I know, but he's like he's like a rapper. He's not like trying to play the God Christian play in the country music space, you know? And yeah, he was. Fuck it. D do you. What I Sexual find preference doesn't mean you can't love God, Ross. You know? <laughs> oh God! Right? Here we go with this whole shit. <laughs> Everybody's full of shit. What I like, buddy, is full of shit. What I'm I like about that, like maybe dude. three years, Jared's gonna start banging dudes, and that's gonna be real weird. I'm just, for me to and watch. you know what? Who cares? You know, <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I'll do a Twitch stream. Like, here's how to be gay. Here's how to not be gay. Guess uh, who just signed up for yeah. Twitch today, Jared? Who? Donald Trump. No way. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do with the it. The real you? Donald Trump? Yes, the real Donald Trump signed up for Twitch President today. Trump. Okay, wow. What? Okay. I mean, he, that's a smart move. He's hitting a young demographic, and a lot of fucking people are going to watch, and people don't realize, like, that motherfucker is making a marketing play right here. Yeah, his, his firm to, is... To change the narrative. 
Yeah, his firm is out of uh, Texas, actually, that does all of his uh, campaigning and, and the online mm -hmm. shit. So they know something we don't. Well, they know the video game industry is, is four times larger than the fucking movie industry. How well, Twitch that? is even video games now. People stream them like fucking watching other YouTube videos. Like, Oh, yeah. And it, it's awkward because I think it's so stupid. But, I, you know, Donut Operator, cheers to him, man. He came out and visited and stayed with me. Phenomenal guy. If you don't know who he is, go check him out. But he was saying he just watches YouTube videos. He's like, dude, I'll watch your YouTube videos and then Twitch that. And then people watch me watching the YouTube videos. I'm like people watch that and they actually checked it out and i'm like it's kind of fun to watch I for should, some reason i, I don't should know have why. people i should just twitch me drinking at the bar every evening yeah my, or just set bar. it up when you when yeah. we do music i because yeah. I, I people have been hitting us up to do behind the scenes because yeah. we don't put enough stuff out you know what i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna work on that this weekend twitch well i actually i have a big project this weekend actually i'm gonna be working on Oh, I'm going to build a pet cemetery out at oh, the yeah. out at the ranch. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm taking it very seriously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is this for a we BRCC had... sketch? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, I'll be on my channel, but it's the uh, we were pretty much redoing um, veterans versus horror movies, and we wrote really crazy shit yesterday. So that's fucking awesome. Are you are you all caught up on all the recent ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're tracking on most of the recent ones. Yep. My, my oh, freaking yeah. wife is a horror film person, so she's always interjecting and telling which ones are popping. All right. Popping. Pippin'. Which, Ross, we do need to start a movement. We got to go to Donut Operator's like, Instagram and tell him to move to Texas because he's considering it. Hashtag move to Texas. Move to Texas, man. Cause move to Texas, wiener. We got Matt What's from Demolition hashtag? Ranch out here. We got myself, Jared, obviously, BRCC, and then having Donut out here would be phenomenal. We're gonna, there'd be so much more content. Just go hashtag Texas operator. Texas operator. Yeah. <laughs> or, or hashtag te Texas donuts. You look, get him out there. Donuts. Fuck with him. Don't let him, don't let him get an a ounce of fresh air. Just fucking smother him with it. What's his yeah. actual Instagram handle? It's donut, donut operator. Okay, cool. Yeah, so go there. He's a Navy veteran and a former police officer. Great dude. Great dude. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, he came out to the grand opening of the uh, Black Rifle Coffee Store in Bernie, which has been a huge hit in our local hometown. And thanks to everybody, man. It's fucking rad to see people getting in there and getting sandwiches and coffee and donut yeah, holes, man. It's use, fucking rad. Do that for lunch later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys, you guys have food there? Yeah. Dude, we had a hill country person come in that does all the reviews and new businesses where we live and he was like the food is bomb service is great coffee's amazing i'm like well no shit the coffee's amazing but yeah the it was this retired guy that developed all the sandwiches for it and you, it's full service man it's super dope full service. it's it's funny Damn. because it doesn't do a lot to like the growth of the company but for me and maybe you guys have the same thing i always see numbers so it's like Hey, 70,000 people like this post or whatever, whatever. It's just, an, it's a metric. It's a number, but then seeing people actually come in and, you know, tell their stories yeah, and, and see them be participate in the brand and buy that coffee and see them just drink it and be happy and laughing. And, oh man, it is the most fucking awesome thing. I love it. Do you stop there all the time before going and work? I mean, it's 20 minutes from my house. So I swing down there all the time. Uh, I tell awesome. people if they're in town, drop their books off and I'll sign them and they can pick them back up wherever they want. That's great. Shit. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to get to the drinking bro of the week? Sure. Oh, all right. Uh, who's this? Kevin, Do you have one? Or? Kevin, yes. Kevin Hewitt. He says, I don't okay. know how this goes, but I'd like to nominate a guy for drinking bro of the week. Uh, Corporal Stephen Cody Soklowski uh, was injured okay. in Afghanistan and succumbed to his injuries October 6, 2010. Fuck. He was with... 2BN. Second uh, battalion. Second battalion. Okay. Uh, Ninth Marines Golf Company. Uh, and then he put in air quotes, uh, hell and a helmet. Uh, he had a smile that could cut through anyone and was overly motivated in a positive way. As a machine gunner squad leader, he was a motivated crayon eater that was always trying <laughs> to make everyone better. We miss him every day, uh, but he made a huge impact on everybody he interacted with. Uh, cheers, dude! Che cheers to him. Cheers Sorry for the loss, man. Cheers. And that's something, dude. I'm I'm gonna go on a bunch of national news at the end of this month, and I'm gonna make sure for all of us drinking bros, motherfuckers, don't forget that we're still in a fucking war, and young yes. men and women are fucking dying, and the American public better not fucking forget. And that yes. is my goddamn motivation. Make these fucking idiots remember that they're brave young service members fucking dying overseas still, and we better yes. support these fucking people. Hell yeah. Good job. Hell yeah. Uh, and to Kevin Hewitt, yes, that is how you do it. Uh, just go to Drinking Bros Podcast on Facebook and then submit your Drinking Bro of the Week. 
and we try to get to all of them. I think we've been fairly successful. Uh, so, anywho, it's Matthew Best. It was it was fun having you back. Will you keep coming Heck back? Yeah. Hey, I'll come on the show anytime, man. I, I love uh, this nice running my setup. suck. And maybe we'll have a little more whiskey. I we stayed up late writing, so I'm yeah. a little slow today, but I appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't wake up until about 20 minutes into this one. <laughs> yeah, nah, you were fine. Are you kidding me? You were really once, firing in today. Once yeah. the cuck holding stuff came out, boom, Jared was awake. <laughs> yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah, there we we go. might have to name this episode "Full Cuck." Um, Full I get, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to find someone for Jared to fall in love with. That's my thing. So that's what that's what we have to do. It's going to be hard. It's hard to fucking trick trick some feelings out of me. But well, look, it, submit it, it to your Instagram. You're over a hundred thousand followers now. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, You're submit welcome. it. Help us, help with this. I said it yesterday. I said yourself. I said it yesterday. <laughs> I realize I never push you on my Instagram. I'm like, fuck all that. You're part of everything I do. I don't like, fuck, man. Go follow Jared. Shit. Yeah, go follow Jared and send in your resume. Go follow to be... Ross Patterson. Go follow Dan Holloway. Go follow everybody. You know. Yeah, put your put your resume into Jared's inbox. Uh, send a nude in there, and then maybe that could be the special yeah. little lady that gets to get boned out start by someone else nude, yeah. next year. Or actually, no. Start fully clothed, then go bikini, then go nude. I like to I like to step it up. Or sorry, I know we want to end the episode, but that can you imagine if they send a nice, cute photo, not too pornographic, and then a bullet list of everything that they're into and their like wants and needs yeah, that'd out of be it, awesome. just a resume. That that's how dating should be in it the should future. Be. It's like, yes. hey, we want to speed this up. Here's what I'm looking. for. Here are my faults. Here yeah. are the things that I'm good at. Take it or leave it. Yeah, I'm I'm into that. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Uh, just go ahead and send it. Just go ahead and send it. Fucking full send. Uh, for Jared Taylor, Matt Best, I am Ross Patterson. We're the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.